In prehistoric times, wood is one of the most readily and abundant construction material, used for human habitation. Therefore, in this video you will learn, various wood construction terminologies, kinds of wood column, kinds of wood beam, parts of floor framing, wall framing, roof framing, and stair framing, including but not limited to kinds of sheathing, kinds of siding, kinds of rafter, and kinds of wood joinery. Building wood construction system. General terminologies. 1. Wood, the stem or branch of a tree that is cut into a desired measurement to form various wood construction material. 2. Nominal dimension, the dimension of a lumber after cutting, before drying and surfacing. 3. Dressed size, the actual size of a lumber after seasoning and surfacing. 4. Lumber, a wood construction material that has been manufactured to its desired size, shape and grading. Kinds of lumber A. Rough, a lumber that has been cut, but not yet surfaced. B. Dressed, a lumber that passes through a planning machine to gain uniform sizes and smooth surfaces. C. Seasoned, a lumber that is dried to reduce its moisture content. D. Yard lumber, a soft wood lumber used as a construction materials. Kinds of dressed lumber. 01. Surfaced green, having more than 19% moisture content at the time of manufacture. 02. Surface dry, having 19% moisture content or less than at the time of manufacture. Kinds of seasoned lumber. 01. Air dried, a lumber seasoned by exposure to the atmosphere. 02. Kiln dried, a lumber seasoned in a controlled environment. 03. Oven dried, a lumber that is exposed to a 214-221F temperature. Leaving the lumber with no single moisture content. Kinds of yard lumber. 01. Timber, used for post which has 5 by 5 inches or larger but not exceeding 2 inches in width, and for beam which has 5 by 7 inches or exceeding more than 2 inches in depth. 02. Dimension, used for joist having 2 by 4 inches in depth, as well as for light framing having 2 by 4 inches, and for decking which has 4 by 2 inches in thickness or with larger width. 03. Boards, having a dimension of less than 2 inches thickness, but more than 2 inches in width. Kinds of wood column. 1. Solid, a single piece of solid wood column, square or rectangle in cross section. 2. Tapered, a solid column that gradually diminishes in its cross sectional area, as it reaches the bottom from the topmost part. 3. Box, a built up column with a hollow core. 4. Built up, are timbers, fastened or glued together to act as a solid column. 5. Spaced, two parallel timbers separated by a blocking at the middle and end point, and joined by a connector. Kinds of wood beam 1. Box, a hollowed beam made by two plywood webs, fastened and glued to a sawn laminated lumber flanges at the top and bottom part. 2. Built up, are laminated timbers laid vertically, fastened or glued together to act as a solid beam. 3. I-beam, two sawn lumber flanges at the top and bottom of a single plywood web. 4. Flitch, a vertically laminated timber bolted with two steel plates at the side. 5. Glued laminated, are laminated timbers laid horizontally, fastened or glued together to act as a solid beam. Kinds of wood framing 1. Platform, a light wood framing construction, wherein there is no interlocking connection between the floors and walls. 2. Balloon, a light wood framing construction, wherein the wall studs extends to the ceiling joist and rafters from the bottom sill plate. 3. Braced, a heavy wood framing construction, wherein solid columns and beam are being used. Parts of wood framing 1. Floor framing 2. Wall framing 3. Roof framing 4. 
Stair framing. Parts of floor framing. A. Decking is a self supporting flooring material that can be directly placed on the top of a beam. B. Planks is a wood strip, usually with tongue and groove joints at the side, laid on top of a sleeper or a floor joist to act as a flooring material. C. Sleeper, a series of wood strips on top of a concrete slab. D. Floor joist, a series of parallel timbers with a least cross dimension of 2 by 4 inches, laid vertically to support the flooring on top of a ribbon, sill, beam or sheer wall. E. Rim joist, are perimeter joists of a wood-framed floor. F. Tail joist, a floor joist that is cut to provide a floor opening. G. Header, a timbers that receives the end part of a tail joist on an open floor. H. Trimmer, are joists that receives the end part of a header. I. Stringer, are short joists attached from a header and extends out from the wall that supports the other end. J. Ledger strip, a small strip of wood, where the joist, stringer, or header seats. K. Bridging, numerous short timbers, that are placed perpendicularly between the spaces of a floor joist at an alternate level. Parts of wall framing. A. Sole plate, a timber laid horizontally at the bottom part of the wall framing where the series of studs rests. B. Wall stud, our series of timbers standing vertically to where the wall finishing materials are fastened or nailed. C. Cripple stud, any stud that is cut to provide an opening on the wall. D. Blocking, a timber that is provided to fill in the gaps of a header and a top plate. E. Header, receives the ends of a cripple stud and blocking. F. Top plate, a timber laid horizontally at the top ends of the wall studs. G. Sheeting, a structural panel board that covers the wall studs. H. Baseboard, the bottom horizontal lining of a wall on top of the floor. I. Siding, the outermost covering of the exterior wall. Kinds of sheathing. 01. Plywood, composed of several layers of veneers bonded together by heat. And pressure, in which the grains are placed perpendicularly to one another. 02. Laminated veneer lumber, composed of several layers of veneers bonded, together by heat and pressure using a waterproofing adhesive, in which all the grains are placed in a longitudinal direction. 03. Composite panel, consisting of two decorative veneers bonded at the sides of a chipboard core. 04. Chipboard, small particles of wood that are bonded by heat and pressure using a waterproofing adhesive. 05. Fiberboard, small particles of wood and other plant fibers that are bonded, together by heat and pressure using other kinds adhesive. 06. Hardboard, a fiberboard having a greater compactness or solidity. 07. Tempered hardboard, a baked hardboard at a certain temperature with chemicals that are needed to improve its dryness and rigidity. 08. Wafer board, thin wood flakes that constitutes a plane of wafers that are bonded by heat and pressure using a waterproofing adhesive. Kinds of siding. 01. Vertical, a series of matched boards that are vertically applied. 02. Colonial, a series of plain square end boards that are horizontally laid, in which the edges overlaps from one another. 03. Bevel, a series of bevel end boards that are horizontally laid, in which the lower thicker edge of the board overlaps from the upper thinner edge of the board below it. 04. Dolly Varden, a series of rabbit bevel end boards, laid horizontally. 05. Drop, a series of patterned end boards, laid horizontally. Parts of roof framing. A. Ridge, the topmost beam of a roof framing receiving the upper sloping ends of the rafters or truss. B. Collar beam, a beam underneath a ridge, connecting between two opposite rafters. C. Rafter, the inclined joist on a roof framing. Connecting the ridge to the roof beam or top plate.
sometimes carrying the purlins. D. Truss is a connection of top cords, bottom cords and webs to form a series of triangles, in roof framing construction to provide more stability wherein the purlins are anchored. E. Pole plate, the bottom beam of a roof framing, receiving the ends of rafters or trusses. F. A fascia board, a horizontal board placed at the lowest part of a roof framing, receiving the ends of the rafters or trusses. G. Purlins, a series of horizontal joists of a roof framing, spaced at 0.60 m on center, on top of rafters, half truss or trusses. It directly carries the galvanized iron sheet roofing material. H. Battens, a series of horizontal wood strips, other than purlins that is closely spaced to anchor the roof tiles. I. Sheeting, a structural panel board that covers the rafters or purlins, carrying the asphalt shingle roofing material. J. Roofing material, the outermost covering of the roof framing. Kinds of rafter. 0, 01. Valley, a rafter between two intersecting planes. 0, 02. Valley jack, a rafter connecting from the ridge to the valley rafter. 0, 03. Cripple jack, a rafter that touches the valley and hip rafters. 0, 04. Hip, a rafter connecting the ridge end to a corner roof beam. 0, 05. Hip jack a rafter connecting from hip rafter to the roof beam. 06. Fly, a rafter extending out from a gable wall. Kinds of roofing material. 01. Galvanized iron sheet. 02. Roof tiles. 03. Asphalt shingle. Parts of stair framing. A. Thread, a rectangular board placed horizontally on top of the carriage. B. Riser, a board that connects the two sides of a thread at different levels. C. Stringer, a sloping board, covering the ends of the riser, thread and side of the carriage. D. Carriage, an inclined beam, with a zigzag edge on the upper part, to support and carry the thread, riser and stringer. E. Ledger strip, a small strip of wood, where the upper end of a carriage rests. F. Apron piece, is a header, receiving the lower ends of a carriage and joists of the landing. G. Kick plate, a wood that anchors the lower ends of a carriage to a flooring. H. Safety nosing, a rough surface edging, placed at the edge of the thread to provide a non-slip step. I. Newel post, a post at the end of the handrail. J. Ballasters, smaller post that supports the mid-span of the handrail. K. Handrail, a horizontal piece of wood, laid in a sloping manner above a series of stair ballasters. Terminologies for wood joinery. 1. Rabbit, a slice in the thickness at the end part of a lumber. 2. Dado, a cut in the thickness at the middle part of a lumber. 3. Mortise, an engraved cut in a lumber, to receive a tenon equal to its dimension. 4. Tenon, a projection for insertion to the mortise at the end part of a lumber. 5. Miters, a 45 degrees angle cut in the edge of two adjoining surfaces, to form a 90 degrees corner. 6. Tongue, a protrusion along the middle edge of a plank, with a width and thickness equal to 1 3 thickness of the plank. 7. Groove, a channeled cut along the middle edge of a plank, with a width and thickness equal to 1 3 thickness of the plank. Kinds of wood joinery 1. End joint, union of two dimension lumbers on their ends. 2. Lap joint, overlapping connection of two dimension lumbers. 3. Mortise joint, a joint having a tenon on the end part of one lumber which is equal in the mortise of the receiving member. 4. Dovetail joint, a lap or mortise joint having a dovetail end. 5. Edge joint, the unification of the edges of the boards or factory lumber. Kinds of end joint. A. Splice, two lumbers plain ends are united by using a fish plate. B. Scarf, 
tapered ends of the two lumbers overlaps with one another. C. Finger, two lumbers several crisscross ends are united. D. Squared splice, to provide a projected and recessed square at the end part of the two lumbers, having a thickness of 2 3 and 1 3 of the total thickness of the interconnecting lumbers respectively, to add more resistance in tension forces. Kinds of lap joint A. Plane lap, a lap joint of two dimension lumbers plane surfaces, either parallel or perpendicular to one another. B. Half lap, to have the thickness of the end part of the two lumbers, with a length equal to its width to add more span. C. Middle lap, to have the thickness of the end part of one lumber and middle part of the other lumber, with a length equal to its width to form a T connection between two structural members. D. Cross lap, to have the thickness of the middle part of the two lumbers, with a length equal to its width to form a cross connection between two members. E. End lap, a half lap connection forming a 90 degrees angle. F. Mitered half lap, an end lap connection with a triangular halving. Kinds of mortise joint. A. Through, the end part of the tenon can be seen, in the opposite side of the mortise where it is inserted perpendicularly, at the mid-span of the receiving member. B. Blind, any side of the tenon can't be seen, it is inserted perpendicularly at the mid-span mortise of the receiving member. C. Open, two sides of the tenon can be seen, it is inserted perpendicularly or parallel to the end part mortise of the receiving member. D. Half blind, one side of the tenon can be seen, it is placed perpendicularly at the end part mortise of the receiving member. E. Brittle, two parallel tenons from one end of lumber is then inserted perpendicularly at the mid-span part of two mortises of the receiving member. Kinds of dovetail joint. A. Dovetail lap, a middle lap dovetail. B. Open single, a mortise open joint having a single dovetail tenon. C. Open multiple, a mortise open joint, having multiple dovetail tenons. D. Half blind multiple, a mortise half blind joint, having multiple dovetail tenons. Kinds of edge joint. A. But, two planks plane edge are being unite. B. Batten, two planks plane edge is being united by putting a strip of lumber equal to the length of the planks, on either side of the adjoining faces. C. Fillet, to have the thickness of the edge part of the two adjoining planks and to fill in with a batten the two halved surfaces. D. Spline, the adjoining edges of the planks are both grooved, and connected by a batten in the middle which is one three of the total thickness of the planks. E. Groove and tongue, the edges of the planks have a long tenon and mortise. F. Ship lap, to have the thickness of the edge part of the two planks, with a width equal to half of its thickness, then overlapping each halved surface. For reinforced concrete construction system, watch the next video on College of Architecture channel.